Good morning, everybody. Again, it's a bright sunny day here in Virginia in the United States. I'm at ARA headquarters, and I'm happy to be with you today. Um, so what is auto recycling? Well, auto recycling um, in, in the United States, uh, it's a very vi vital and important uh, industry. In the United States, automotive recyclers are really more engaged in reuse and we can and we think that we want to reuse then recycle our components. So components are, are the are the main thing that we want to recycle and use. So ARA, for over 78 years, the Automotive Recyclers Association has represented the professional automotive recyclers. We're a very important part of the automotive supply chain. Our mission here at ARA is to advance the automotive recycling industry and to promote all of the good things that we do for our, our country, for our world, for our communities. And our members are dedicated to the efficient removal and reutilization of ROE, recycled original equipment. We are genuine original equipment auto parts and we that's what we sell, that's our market and that's how we uh, provide services to our communities, which is now a much more global market. So when we talk about uh, the end of road life, so we are really working with vehicles at the end of their road life and we prepare those vehicles when we're done with them for the end of their life. So in the US and in North America, we process about 12 million vehicles per year, making it the most recycled item in the US as well as around the globe. The automotive recycling industry is about the 16th largest industry in the United States, uh, representing about $32 billion annually. And we've been around for, again, a long time since vehicles have been around. And we employ about 140,000 people at more than 9,000 locations around the country. Reuse is the purest form of recycling. I think we need to make sure that people understand that and that we make that our benchmark and our, and our mantra as we move our, our industry forward in whatever country around the globe. Uh, the US is very fortunate in that we have a lot of opportunities uh, that many countries don't have that I've traveled around around the globe and seen some of the uh, conditions in which recyclers have to operate uh, with with little or no uh, um, technological advances. So I think technology is going to be an important role. But we want to make sure that we are talking about that we are the purest form of recycling. We need to uh, tell everybody we conserve natural resources. We prevent pollution and we are saving energy. We're also having a huge impact on climate change. And what a lot of people don't understand is that when end of life vehicle recycling is done correctly, we actually are negative carbon. So we're good for the environment, we're good for our planet. And oh, by the way, we create a lot of jobs. So auto recycling is gonna to have to continue to evolve. We're, we're seeing very big changes in the automobiles today. So we've been around for a long time. And as those automobiles changed, every step of the way, our industry has changed and sidestepped right with them all the way. Uh, where we have always seen the uh, internal combustion engines and the transmissions, those are in our country and in North America, our industry's top two profit sources. Uh, we're gonna be seeing some changes though as things come along with the uh, electric vehicles. And so there's gonna be a huge shift into a new market for the auto recycling industry with all the advanced technology in the electric and self-driving vehicles. So again, motor vehicles are the most recycled consumer product in the world today. And we as an industry need to adopt quality standards that are consistent with our customers' expectations. I've heard some of that today on some of the presentations that some of you have given before, but at the end of the day, we've got to stop start looking at quality as being the one thing that we need to really work very hard on. Auto parts, 
have a huge value. Uh, and again, quality has got to be a huge factor in, in each and every one of the businesses that operate in that environment. And then again, we need to be concerned about the environment and, and, pr and promote that auto parts help to preserve natural resources. And again, simplicity. It's easy when you, when you are out there repairing your car to think about the fact that taking a part off of another vehicle, it's the same thing that was on that car when it was driving down the road. So it's very simple. Another thing that a lot of people don't understand is that automotive resource, the recyclers are the primary source of parts to the automotive rebuilding and manufacturing industry. We, if we're doing our businesses right, besides supplying parts to be reused, once those parts are come back to us and cannot be reused again, we put them back into another market and another part of the circular economy so that they can be remanufactured to be reused again. So are we part of the circular economy? I think we're right at the top of the food chain personally. As an automotive dismantler, our entire uh, materials extraction all the way to the end of life of that vehicle in our facilities, we are always looking for new opportunities to get more parts out into the market, but also to help reduce environmental impacts and conserve resources and reduce costs. So as you can see by this uh, display here, the automotive dismantler can send parts in many different directions and with the efficient use and um, trained personnel, it makes that job a much easier. So what is the thing that has had the most impact on our industry? I would have to tell you if we had not even had 2020, the answer would still be technology. We had to focus more and more in 2020 to uh, adopt practices that enabled our customers to still reach out to us and for us to reach them. So we've had many in the US, many large consolidations. Uh, we have a lot of independent recyclers that are joining together and, and combining their inventories so that they can pro provide better, better fill rates to the customers. And we're also expanding the technology to allow customer actually live access to our inventory. And this integration is, is definitely helping uh, shops and other customers improve cycle times and fulfill their orders that they need to fulfill. Our software providers, we'd all be lost without them. Uh, their focus is to focus on how to utilize uh, the innovations and technology to make sure that some of these things are seamless and that we can uh, continue to move and, and grow as an industry. And they will, they'll continue to develop new uh, products and services as they did. I assure you in 2020, every software provider out there was definitely looking for better ways to, to keep people connected. Just imagine where we would be today without technology in our lives in 2020 and how connected we all are today. Um, and the intelligent part procurement tools will also enhance availability of all parts and to be able to get other parts out into the marketplace. So the opportunities that we are seeing from all these things is that we've had a, a development of increased applications for sourcing and procuring recycled parts as well as our vehicles that we bring into our businesses on a daily basis. So we've had multiple applications that uh, have, have allowed us to uh, additionally monitor, uh, but again, we have to have more people to do that and tr more trained people to do that. I think one of the most important things and a great opportunity for recyclers around the globe is that we need to have an industry standardization and the use of damage codes and part descriptions so that we're all speaking the same language and when we're talking to our customers, they know exactly what they're getting. So e the e-commerce applications that are tied to some of the estimate applications in our customers' body shops and mechanical repair facilities has allow allowed recyclers to um, obtain more accurate data and demand data 
Uh, that's very important to our recyclers in the United States and in North America because our computer systems really drive our businesses today. They, they tell us which vehicles to even look at and procure and bring into our facilities because they're the most profitable. So it's very, very important to us to, to have data that's coming to us from multiple sources. And again, I think really what's very important is that recycling associations such as ARA, EGARA, and, and the, those around the globe need to continue to work together to create, to create needed training programs and certification processes. And I think joint efforts in this regard to re, will lead to enhanced standards, improved processes, and superior customer service. Again, it's all about networking. That's why we're all here today. We're here today to network. I think that recyclers that are involved in industry associations, that are involved in committees, trade shows, and other areas uh, to better relate to the collision industry and our customers. We have to be more proactive. We have to find better ways to communicate with our customers and speak the same language that they are. And that comes from networking and being part of your associations because we as an association try to stay on top of that for you so that you're not having to do so much work in your facilities and you can continue running your facilities and stay profitable. We help educate customers. We help educate our communities. We help educate the regulators and all the government uh, entities out there on just how good our industry is. So through our associations, uh, we can help to share inventory capabilities, have joint quality control initiatives, and help people in their supply, supply chain management to create better working uh, relations with, uh, within the industry. And again, it's all about making sure that we're providing opportunities for our members to sell more parts and be more profitable. So how do we do this? ARA for many years has known that what we need to do is find ways for auto recyclers to uh, make sure that they're putting the best product back out into the marketplace. And so quality control is very important. So if you are starting a new recycling venture somewhere, make sure that quality control is one of the first things that you're considering because it will help minif minimize the returns or the customer unsatisfaction, it's just going to make your life a lot easier. So let's do quality before quantity. That's very important. Make sure your parts are clean and properly packaged and ready to go out to your customer. We make, have to make sure that our quality control personnel are well trained. They know what that part is. They know that the, the part is correct and that the quality matches the description in the recycler's inventory. So we have created assembly descriptions to consider and to ensure that the consistency between the customer, the parts specialist, the person pulling the parts, the delivery driver, every one of them is a cog in that system to make sure that we're getting that quality product out the door. So ARA has standard cut sheets. We have a printed diagram of the vehicle. Uh, so that if we have customers that are wanting body cuts, we can make sure that we get the, the correct cut line for that. And then again, becoming much more important every day is the vehicle identification number because it's associated with the part to ensure the accuracy of the part that is selected and sold to the customer. So here is an ARA damage code locator. And if anybody wants this, just let me know and I'll make sure that I send you a good clean copy that you can use. But this helps us talk to one another and uh, know what we're seeing on the screen. And of course, today, the nice thing is, is we can take pictures too, so that helps even more. But this, this was a standardized language uh, that we put out into the industry so that when our customers are looking at our parts electronically, they can see where the damage might be. So if we had, say, the door on the driver's side had a small little ding in the center of the door, that would be in, in area number five, 
and it would be, as you can see, the damage types on the bottom. It would be a parking lot ding, so it would be P, and then we would say how big is that size based on a credit card or business card, and usually you will see the 5P1, which is a parking lot ding, which, by the way, is probably the most uh, common damage that you're going to see on any vehicle around the globe. Again, where we're really looking at making a substantial change is in the dismantling of these vehicles. It is very important that you always maintain a safe working environment in the dismantling area. Make sure that your crew is uh, correctly outfitted with the correct uh, personal protective equipment, the PPE. It's very important that you make sure that they are utilizing it and, and wearing it every day. Make sure that they understand the importance of depolluting the vehicle and by removing the refrigerant, the fluids, batteries, mercury switches, et cetera, and make sure that we, you have the correct storage in your facility for all of that. Uh, the dismantler, besides dismantling the vehicle, will, will also visually inspect all the ports and make sure that they're noting any evidence of damage that might have been previous there. And, and, and of course, testing some of the mechanical parts. We also, because we see many vehicles coming into our facilities that may have parts other than the original equipment parts, we have to make sure that our dismantlers know how to identify the uh, recycled original equipment parts versus the aftermarket parts. And again, they're going to confirm the accuracy of the part description. They're going to tag those parts. They're going to mark them uh, with a stock number or a VIN number for, for easy identification and reference, making sure that when they're stocked in the recycler's inventory, that it's easy to find and identify. Uh, and again, many parts uh, right at the time of dismantling are being cored, uh, particularly, I think everybody in the world knows the catalytic converters. Uh, are being removed at the time of dismantling and sent straight to, uh, to recycling. Again, safety, 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 safety. We can never be safe enough in our facilities. We understand the importance of maintaining that safe environment for our employees. So make that a mantra in your facility as well. It's important to the employee. It's important to us. It helps us to maintain and, and keep the cost of insurance and workers' compensation and everything else down by maintaining a safe work environment. Keeping it clean and safe will also increase productivity. And by the way, if you do it right, it's also going to turn benefits for your, for your customer. And make sure, again, you can't say this enough, make sure that uh, uh, employees wear their personal protective equipment in the production area is very, very important, even more than, than anywhere else in our facilities, in the production areas of our business so that we don't have any injuries. The other thing to make sure that you have a successful and profitable business, we have to stand behind our products. Warranties help our industry compete with the new parts market. Uh, as a recycler in this industry, having spent over 30 years in this industry, I can tell you that my competitive edge in my market in New Mexico was the fact that I had an extended warranty on my parts, more so than any of the other recyclers that were competing with me in my market. So I can tell you, you do not have to be the lowest price guy in the neighborhood to, to have a successful business. Customers want to trust you. And I believe if you believe in your components and your parts and, and the product that you're putting back out to the marketplace, you're going to guarantee that those are going to meet the customer's expectations. That creates that, that synergy of trust. So many recyclers provide a lifetime corrosion guarantee on all their sheet metal parts. In New Mexico, with a relative humidity of usually less than 10%, uh, we were pretty rusty free, so we could do that easily in our, in our market there. Uh, many of us offered warranties of the mechanical part, part components as well, and even some of the components that were in uh, the doors and everything else that we sold, 
we warranted everything that we sold. We guaranteed it would meet the expectations. And again, markets will demand this. It will no longer just be an option. It will be something you will have to engage in and you will have to uh, provide that. And for many of us in the markets uh, for many years, we even offered a limited lifetime warranty on some of our parts. So where is, what are some of the issues and what are some of the problems that we're having? So a big thing that we're seeing right now is there are big gaps in information and resources. And so we are pretty highly engaged here at ARA as we have been, as you can imagine in 2020, it, we've made it one of our highest priorities to address the gaps in, in information sources and training. Uh, we really have been highly engaged on the EV uh, training and uh, many of you know uh, Andy Latham, we've worked very, very closely with him, but we know that we're going to have to provide the training and the resource materials in order to address the rapid pace of change in the EV marketplace. We will continue to play a strategic role as an industry in the end of life vehicle processing of these electric vehicles. And we want to make sure that the automakers and everybody out there in the uh, automotive repair segment sees us as a strategic partner to assure that electric vehicles, just like their predecessors, the internal combustion engine vehicles, are continued to be processed at the end of their road life by those most qualified to do so, and that's us, the professional automotive recycling industry. So again, I think one of the things that I hear the most from auto recyclers as they travel around the United States and the globe is that there is a shifting paradigm of automotive recycling. We are experiencing, again, rapid shifts on an all-encompassing level from a business model to data integrity uh, acquiring our inventory and the increased customer expectations of us. Uh, you know, we have things such as Amazon and eBay that had elevated a customer's expectations of automotive recyclers and every product that's out on the marketplace today. So we have to remember that old ways will not open new doors for us and that we have to be ready, willing, and able to adapt and shift as the industry shifts. One of the very most important things and one of the things that ARA I think has done well over the years uh, is training because we all benefit, our customers benefit, our employees benefit, the industry benefits when, when we employ professional individuals that have enhanced knowledge of the recycled parts industry and the repair process. We really have to understand what our customers need and what they what they can put back out there. So our, our employees have to be a little bit uh, smarter and a little bit more savvy than they used to be. We've got to have many more computer skills as well as, as, well as the ability for our members and uh, our employees to build strong and ethical relationships with our customers. We have to stay current with the ever-evolving industry and make sure that we are offering training in, a, in a, all departments year-round 24-7. And we have done that because ARA has a university. And please plan on going there today and checking it out. It's arauniversity.org. But we put a university at your fingertips and has training on there for just about anybody in your industry. And again, we just introduced many new programs this year, particularly for the electric vehicles. So we're a complex industry and our vehicles are getting more complex and we need to make sure that our training meets those uh, demands. So ARA meets this demand with online training and certification programs that are developed and taught by top industry professionals that will meet the professional automotive recyclers needs in 2021. So the future is relying on us to make the right decisions now. So we have to make sure that we understand our responsibility as automotive recyclers, 
to save materials from the landfill, make sure we're putting those products back out where they need to go into the circular economy. We need to reduce what goes into landfill by making, again, making sure that we're sorting those materials once we're getting to that point. Uh, reduce the use of natural resources. That's what would be best. And again, reduce manufacturing cost. And I think as recycling uh, some of the other components such as the plastics on vehicles becomes more refined, it's going to be ever even better. So we haven't seen each other in person. This is the way that we've communicated over the last uh, year and a half. So uh, I do hope, we are hoping to see many of you in person at the ARA convention in November in Dallas, Texas. Uh, so please save the date, November 10th through the 13th at the Sheridan Hotel in Dallas, Texas, because together we succeed. Thank you very much. And if anybody has any questions, I'll take them at this time. Thank you very, very much for that. Um, and also, I think, you know, you just reinforced um, how important we are and the responsibility that we have as an industry. And, uh, you know, and I think that's important. I think a lot of people don't sort of pat themselves on the back enough sometimes to, um, you know, to, you know, to celebrate what they're doing. And, but also you, you, you it's all about not resting on our laurels. And you, and you said that, you, you know, we are, especially the ARA, Looking forward, looking for the next step, keeping up with technology, understanding our role. And I, and I think that, that that's a very important point that we've always got to be developing as an industry. Exactly, exactly. Well, and I think the really, really important thing for everybody out there is that I think auto recycling, automotive recycling is the sustainability model. Uh, we're, we've, we're having many conversation with the uh, automakers uh, in their sustainability plans. Uh, and I can tell you, I, I will share this with you, but we were in conversations with General Motors Sustainability Division and um, having some of the conversation and some of the questions that were coming up, um, I asked them, many of them, have any of you ever been in an automotive recycling facility? and none of them had. So we set up a tour of one of our uh, local members in the Michigan area, very close to the automakers, uh, Fox Auto Parts, and we gave them a tour of that facility and their eyes were opened. They could not even grasp how much was going on in that facility and they were impressed. And so I would definitely make sure that if you ever have the opportunity to get the automaker to your facility, it, it would definitely help you and it would help them because I, I, the one thing I told them at the beginning of the uh, day that we had with them, I said, as each of you go through here, and we had some of them that were the, the design engineers for General Motors, I said, as we go through this facility, I want you to think where you as an automaker can make these vehicles more recyclable and and how do you play that role at the beginning of the manufacturing process when you determine what materials materials you're going to put into that vehicle yeah that's great and i've heard similar things happen over here in the in, in the uk and um it's something that we're going to be trying to uh, encourage in the future as well people coming onto site to be impressed you know the old the old school is out you know there is a new era happening within vehicle recycling and um just to sort of um explain what we try to do at auto recycling world is that's what we want it's all about unity you know this uh, our, our pages and this not for the recyclers or the, the dismantler sorry but it's for the the, the the vehicle manufacturers for them to sort of show what they are doing and what they're possessing because i think we need to bring everyone together so that we're all on the same page so so that's very very important anyway at the end of your speech you did say any questions and there are many so can we start with some questions if that's all right with you certainly 
Okay, so the first question, or the most popular so far, is from Steve Fletcher, who's over in, in Canada. He, he writes, Sandy, can you comment on how ARA is working with other industri industry associations in the supply chain, such as ISRI, which is the Institute of Scrap Recycling Industries? Oh, you might have just mentioned this already, so. Um... Yes, uh, yes, Steve, and as you know, uh, very often we're on the same page with uh, ISRI, which is our, our Scrap Recycling Association, uh, and many of you know because they are they have a global reach just like ARA does. Uh, so um, for the most part, we definitely have a good working relationship with them. Uh, we ran into a few little issues this year, though, uh, where they were on a little different um, point of view uh, as far as the catalytic converter theft issue. Uh, we believe, again, first and foremost, Automotive Recycling Association, we represent people who want to put parts back out into the marketplace to be reused again on automobile parts. And we were seeing, is we kind of leaning towards the direction of actually potentially prohibiting that? And so we had a few little uh, glitches along the way, but for the most part, we work very, very uh, well with ISRI. At the end of the day, their companies are getting our vehicles when we're done with them, and so we have to have that good working relationship with them. Okay, thanks very much, Andy. The next question is, what does the future look like with the advancement of electric vehicles? That is a good question, and, and, and of course, uh, we had a lot of time in 2020 to actually look at that issue, and uh, but we had begun the work on that several years ago when we knew that we were going to be faced with uh, EVs proliferating the marketplace more and more every day. And so uh, for us, it was all about making sure our recyclers were ready to handle those vehicles and to look for new opportunities there's a whole lot fewer moving parts on EVs, as we know, where the average uh, internal combustion engine today has probably over 30,000 moving parts or parts on it. And now we're looking at vehicles that have less than 50 parts. Uh, we're gonna be having to look at how we're gonna put those parts back out into the marketplace and what that's gonna look like. And so uh, we're gonna have to have a lot more training. Uh, we're gonna have to have a lot more knowledge we're going to have to really dig deep to, to make sure that we have the ability to put those parts back out into the marketplace. So we are working on something right now that uh, hopefully is going to make that uh, happen. Okay, thanks. Uh, the next question is from Neil Josson again. Sandy, congratulations for how embedded reclaimed parts are in the US repair chain. What advice would you give to others, including the UK, who also want to see part reuse as standard? Well, and I, I wish that uh, we had an even higher um, push in the marketplace, but we seem to be maintaining steadily at 11, 12% of all parts used uh, on the automotive repair market. Um, and that's been the same figure for many, many, many years. We haven't seen any growth, which is a little disheartening. But again, as we go around the world, we see that we definitely have a better penetration than, than other people. Again, I think it begins with quality. I, it begins with being able to develop that trust with your customer. So, you know, we are working on the certification program to update it for the electric vehicles, but please take a look at uh, the uh, certified auto recycler program and make sure that uh, you want to look at that and see if there's some ideas there that can help you dig a little deeper into that market okay so sandy many questions coming in we're starting to run out of time so mm -hmm. i'm just gonna ask one more but um i'd just like to make sure would you be hanging around for a little while so people can approach you directly with sure. their questions that's great sure. absolutely um and thanks so much um so the last question we've got here um, which i'll be asking is how can the industry benefit from working closely with international partners well, I think together, uh, and again, I think our motto this year is together we succeed. I think that we've had to work together more this year. And of course, we now know that we can do it in, in things such as this. In fact, ARA, uh, for the very first time in our 78 years as an association, held a full virtual uh, convention in November last year. 
our event this year. We'll have a virtual component, but we're cer certainly hoping we see a lot of your faces in person there because I'd like to be able to shake your hand. And I've been vaccinated, so you don't have to worry about me. But I think the uh, benefit is that we communicate, we can share ideas, we can share standards, we can share our successes, we can also share our failures because I think there's lots to be learned from that. So I think collaboration uh, between industries and partners and other people in the industry, I think that's huge. I think none of us could do this alone. And uh, I can tell you when I first got in this industry, the first thing I did was join ARA, uh, attend the conventions. I learned so much from my fellow recycler and I attribute my success in industry to that. So please uh, get involved, uh, join your associations, uh, join ARA. We have a very reasonable rate for international partners. So I'm going to give you a little push there. So uh, it's all about being, being uh, involved.